class i literally didn't attend a single lecture not a single one for the whole entire module let me just say any of them listen to me here yeah i'm about to tell you the real truth i didn't want to be here i hated it i cried all the time oh my god oh yeah <laughs> and you saw <laughs> Did you find a boyfriend? Is the city as bad as they say okay. it is? The famous Birmingham. Where did we begin? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you by the title, today we are going to be doing like a first year summary review. Do you know what I mean? Basically, we both went to University of Birmingham. This is yeah, Shani. We both went here. UOB. I asked some questions on my Instagram. You gave like hella flipping questions about like university and UOB specifically. So we're just going to answer them because first year's over, guys. Like today's literally the last night, and we're literally going home tomorrow. We're going to do a little something, something. Okay. So if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, this question, we kind of saw this like yesterday, and we were actually debating, what's easier, first year or year 13? Because before I came to uni, people would actually say that uni is easier than first year, but other mm. people would say that that's literally BS. So, yeah. what do you think? I'm not like, you should go first, because my opinion is skewed. Your opinion is skewed? It's oh skewed. yeah, well, tell them why it's skewed. It's so true. If they know, they know. Tell them. Okay, so real context, guys. I went to Barrett's Manor. Another one, thank you. Another one, thank you. Another one, thank you. If you know um, about school, yeah, you know it's crazy, and you know the workload is just crazy. So sixth form for me was just harder than most people. Yeah. Well, I went to just a normal, regular, regular sixth form, and I think that they're, they're different. They're yeah. different. And also, my course also skews my answer because for me personally, all my exams the whole entire time were multiple choice. So, in uni, by the way. So, like, other people would have, like, actual normal exams, like, where they have to actually write stuff. I think you had writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas I had multiple choice. I had assignments as well, but it's also, like, they were all pretty similar. So, it's, like, the same assignment we did, but just with a different question the whole time. So, once you've done it once, it's, like, you kind of get how to do it. So, I feel like A-levels were harder for me because you had to actually write essays and, like, get, learn mm. all the content off by heart. It you have to know yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to memorize everything. Oh, know yeah. Everything and also, in A levels, I was actually trying to get the highest grade. I was trying to get A star. Whereas in uni, yeah, you, just, you, only, you just want to pass. You just want to pass. That's Everyone literally. Just wants that's another thing. First year, don't be trying to get don't. first class. Everyone's going to try and feel like, yeah, I'm going to be top of my class. I'm going to be top of. It's never no. that serious. It doesn't even count towards your final You're gonna grade. You're going to be so done in the beginning. Literally. Just, literally just, just have pass. fun and make yeah. sure you pass. So, so I think yeah. I would say your fame was harder. See, I get that, but see, I would say that year 13 was harder because year 13 was always going to be hardest, literally A levels, and yeah. her points are just all my points. Yeah. But then university might be harder than people think it is because it's not in terms, like in terms of like the academic workload, it could be easier. But the actual, the mental struggles, that sort of aspect, mm. like trying to get to every single 9 a.m., trying to get to uni, just trying to wake up on time, meet your deadlines, meet assignments. Yeah. It's just so, you just feel so lazy at you. A lot of deadlines. So many deadlines. deadlines. And it's just like, it always feels like once you complete one thing, there's another thing. Yeah, you that's do. true. I literally yeah. had assignments that would, would do within days of back each other. So just like trying to keep up with uni is so yeah. hard. It's yeah, hard it's hard. easy to fall behind. It's so easy to fall behind. Uni, because yeah. sixth form, it's like you've got this routine of waking up certain times. And, you, and you will be and in you school. have to stay in school until yeah. it's done. That's actually Here, so you true. You can literally leave uni whenever you want. And it's just like, uni isn't compulsory. There's no like repercussions if you don't go to your lectures. Mm -hmm. I can't lie, there was so, literally one module for mm -hmm. semester two, but I literally didn't attend a single lecture. Not a single one for the whole entire module. And then I literally had to catch up on the whole module just before the exam. So like, it's so easy to yeah. like, fall behind. So then that's when yeah. uni becomes hard. But if you stay on top of it, which you most likely won't, you won't. to be honest, then it's easy yeah. kind of thing. Was it hard to make friends outside of your dorm or outside of your flat? Not really, because I had ACS Society. So it's like a lot of my type of people, we would all meet up and like, that's how, where a lot of people became friends. You also have your course mates as well. I feel like for me, I didn't make friends like friends on my course. course. I don't know anyone there. Really? Yeah, like I remember people be like, oh yeah, you'll make friends on your course. How? Really? Yeah. But I don't know if it's because of oh. my, the demographic of my course. Oh. I do psychology. Oh, but I do psychology, you do pharmacy. pharmacy. So oh, yeah, on my psychology course is literally like, the whole cohort is literally white females. Nothing against really? the babes. But there's not a single male. Oh, fairs. And like, black people are scarce. So I, I feel like a lot of black people in nah, oh. all white people, all white girls, and they're also not any other like obviously that's not a problem, but it's also like the where they come from. They're not really Londoners mm, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're more like yeah. posher people. Like it's just do you know what I mean? Okay, so, like, not they're not though. the type of people that I would really make yeah. friends with like that. But um, also another thing I was gonna say is that for context, my friend, me and her came to uni together and mm. literally live 
next door. So I feel like that was another reason why it took me longer to make friends outside of my flat because yeah. me and her literally should have stayed here and just stayed together. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're going to uni without friends, I feel like you would actually make friends easier than if you go with your friends. Because then you'll be tempted mm, you're to forced just stay. To make yeah, you're forced, you're forced to make friends. To yeah. Because even me, I came to uni with like a few people from back home. So it's like, I didn't really have that experience of being dropped in a completely new yeah, place. that one there. Having to fight for myself, having to find new friends for myself. Crazy. That's so scary. Yeah. And also, if you live in an accommodation like ours, we're going to get onto a oh, in a bit, yeah. but if an accommodation like ours where there's like a first floor where there's like, Low, like all the common rooms and stuff and like stuff like that yeah, a, lot of social a lot of social things will happen and the yeah. actual accommodation themselves they will they will like host their own they events. host a lot of things here yeah. so it actually depends on your comments as well because yeah. some people they do like private comm where it's harder for you to like or if your comments like really dispersed yeah, or, like yeah, all the yeah, blocks like are all far separate away separate different buildings because nah. ours like everything is in one building yeah literally. So everyone is together but some literally. people block A is here block B is down the road yeah. so yeah. it's just like it's harder for you to mingle how long did it take for you to settle in and like get used to the uni life. You take long. I don't really. I'm not an independent person. The thing is, I'm independent, but I struggle so much. I think the really? whole I was depressed the whole semester one. I didn't want to be here. I hated it. I cried all the oh, time. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. And you thought sort of, <laughs> come by. If you watch my watch my videos, you'd know. Like I think it was November times. I literally was so depressed. I was like, I'm going home, and I didn't come back till January. Like, I literally just left. So the whole of November, the whole of December, January, I wasn't here. Do you want a hug? No. <laughs> Oh yeah, mine was very quick. Yeah, as soon as I got out, because I didn't want to be home anyways. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like it depends, it depends on how much on, like, you like your actual home. Yeah. Like, if you're really, like, close, like, close in that, what's the word? Close knit. Close knit family. Yeah. And it's like, you really, really love your home, love your space, love everything, and then you're going to go to another city, go to uni, you're going to hate it. Yeah, I think mean, that's why it was hard for me, because it was just me and my mum all the time. Yeah. And then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would obviously hate it. Yeah. But me, get me out of there. Me? I have to turn up. That's what you would like. <laughs> Literally. Right, next question. Did you receive any scholarships and how is managing mon money at uni like? Let me tell you something. I remember there was another question as well with link to this. So it was something like, is it smart to at least buy some things with your SFE? Da, da, da. So we're literally just going to talk everything SFE right now. I got the full amount. I got the absolute minimum. <laughs> As in the bare the minimum. The bare minimum. minimum. Yeah, so this is literally yeah. two different perspectives. So yeah. with me, my SFE did cover my rent. So there was extra left over, which I would use for grocery shopping. In. but then even after grocery shopping there was also abundance left over so then that meant that I would double dabble in my SFE to buy certain things you know what I mean money. yeah instead of saving it but I thought yeah. you know what I mean free government money it's not free because I've got to pay it at some point but right now it feels free to get so yeah I think mean, it's okay to buy some things with your SFE like as long as you've covered your rent covered your food shop why not and then I'll back to me <laughs> Another perspective. I don't think it's okay to mm. spend an SFE because I couldn't. But if you could, you would though, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but it's for the people that are going to get the minimum and yeah. your SFE. Oh, yeah, there's even one that says where well, people, um, your rent doesn't. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, my rent did not cover... It's my right, SFE yeah. did not cover my rent. Mm. My rent was 7.5k and my SFE was 4.5. So, so there was extra three point, there was extra 3k difference that I need to cover. But luckily for me, my parents they stepped in and they paid the difference and some. Yeah, I feel like I can't even help people because it's like what if they have minimum and they don't have parents to help them? Then don't get just a don't com spend. that is too no get, get, get a in a com that's don't, yeah, yeah get, get a job waste a com yeah get in a com that's get going a job to and be ration rent. everything just live life yeah because some people they have get the minimum but they still want to get a nicer com because this yeah. a com that we live in we live in battery park that's by the way yeah. on celly oak so this a com is definitely one of the high i think it's the second most expensive or third you're gonna have to make the difference but if you can't have your parents you need to work yeah but then again do it you have time to work course. do you have time so it's just a whole lot of you, need to, think, you need to sit down and you need to plan your finances yeah um how are you able to balance social life and school work i think this is again dependent on like the course you're your doing if you're gonna go and do medicine i promise you your social life work life balance is gonna be different to someone like me who just does psychology depends on your timetable it's you, like it depends on how much time you have I feel like semester one was more like social life more than yeah, uni yeah, yeah, life yeah, yeah. and then semester two it was like whoop 
But yeah. even still though, I feel like I still had some of a social life. But I feel like it's because that's another thing. We're gonna get onto the whole difference between the universities in Birmingham in a sec. But mm. one thing I would say about University of Birmingham, Birmingham specifically is that because there's a good balance between work life and social life, like the people here, although yeah. we party, everyone still revises. Revision season mm. was still a bit sociable anyway because everyone would revise together. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. during exam season, everyone was always revising. To, but yeah, we all do it together. Together, so like we have like a floor in our con where it's like all the study rooms. Yeah. So even revising was still so looking on like a little something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're still yeah. with your friends. It's still socialising. Yeah. It's still something, something. So like we kind of mix the both, yeah. social life and school life. Okay, so this one, someone said, what are the best comms to apply for? Already filmed an comms video. Don't oh, worry, okay. I got your back, babe. I got your back. We went to all the accom well, most of the accommodations mm -hmm. in Birmingham, and we gave our opinions of them. Yeah. So wait for that video is coming soon yeah. however just like a quick overview battery park is the best of con also if you're wondering about Selly Oak the Vale go to Selly Oak especially if you're black male female yeah 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 Selly Oak will be your best friend and battery park will be your best friend um how is the teaching at UOB they don't teach they don't teach you they read off of slides they read off of literally literally and that's basically it yeah some of the lectures are really not personal at all they're not they, don't, they don't build any connection there's with no you. connection but I feel like that might not, I don't think that's specific to UOB I feel like just uni yeah, in general yeah. literally it's so different to secondary school yeah. it's not personal at all they were not gonna know your name no i just emailed them a lot yeah maybe but i don't even feel like i can email them because i just feel like I'm, you're actually a stranger i don't yeah. even know you i don't have that connection with you yeah, yeah. we're not we're not boys like that we're not boys no no <laughs> is the city as bad as they say okay. it is the famous birmingham where did we begin do you know what I'm going to say? First of all, it depends where. Because mm. we don't live in a city centre. I feel like yeah. ma most of the rumours and the speculation yeah. and the reputation comes from the city centre because that is actually the go. Yeah, we live more like the suburbs of Birmingham. Yeah, we're living more so like UAB the... is more quiet size of Birmingham. Mm. We're, we're not nice... far away. We're like a 10 minute cab. Yeah, like we're 10, not, 15 minutes away from away. the city centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not far, yeah, yeah. but I think the there. distance is needed because if you we go to the city the centre, you will see stabbings. Yeah. You will see GMs. Everywhere you look, you, everything you hear every, about Birmingham it is the true, truth. but it's only in the city. Yeah. Everything I've heard, I've never heard anything that's come from Selly Oak. And the only time there was something that happened in Selly Oak was because literally... Ashley the people from there, their side came There was came one singular down. party where a stabbings did happen, yeah. but it was because the BCU yeah. and Aston yeah. people came, came to the party up. and brought their shenanigans. Yeah. And there's rats here. Next question! <laughs> we are also going to talk about something that is very spoken upon. <laughs> dirty flatmates, dirty, dirty kitchen, kitchen, dirty flats, dirty everything. everything. Yeah. yeah, it is the truth. It is true. It is true. But it can depend. I've actually seen some people in very clean kitchens. I feel like our com specifically didn't experience it to the fullest extent. They won't let because, you. Yeah, the inspectors yeah, come. They and inspect you will literally get fined if your kitchen's too dirty. Yeah, so they won't let you. Yeah. You follow me on TikTok. There's literally a viral TikTok of literally my kitchen. It was disgusting. Uh, what's up? What's up? Jump but people mm. have maggots in their kitchens like it's actually disgusting yeah. it's yeah, disgusting yeah, yeah, yeah. however i feel like with our com specifically we're literally saying how because our flats are maximum five people four or five people yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a limit on how dirty it can be yeah. a lot of the times when you see dirty kitchens it's because there's 10 people living there yeah and it's like it's gonna be that one person that's screaming on the group chat that you need to clean the kitchen but they, they're just overpowered but they, they're just overpowered but they if it's no like say. there's one or two people and then there's only three other people that are innocent literally it's more easier to tell to, them to, to tell them to clean it yeah. to tell 10 people to clean yeah they're not gonna listen to you how did you break the ice with your flatmates as a shy person oh actually with your night students they have an app where they put oh. all the flatmates in a group chat before you start uni on our group chat we exchange snapchats and instagrams mm. and then we made a group chat on snap and then we would just talk about moving in and stuff and then so when we came in we kind of already knew who's who mm. and another way to break the ice is just chill in the kitchen because that's the, so like, the social area that you guys have so just chill there someone's gonna walk in you just have small talk da -da 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 -da. Ask about the course, yeah don't stay in your room I feel like, you know, with my flat, there's five of us, literally three of us already knew each other. Yes, yeah, and literally three of us knew each yeah, other. Yeah, one of them was a new girl. I knew her before. I knew that she was going to be in the flat before I got here, but I didn't mm. know her. And then the other person, we met him when we, we got here. But mm. literally the new girl, the first night she came, we literally had a party together. Oh, that was the biggest icebreaker yeah. ever. We literally met her. It was a bit awkward, like a bit shy, but she was like a really like, she was trying to like not be awkward. Mm. So she was really like bubbly in that. Yeah. And then that same night, Got the axe, alcohol, yeah. got, had a party, and literally broke the ice from there. From then on, yeah. we were like this. Yeah. Would you recommend going uni outside of your city and why? I really wanted to stay in London at one point. Like, so I was always like, oh, I'm a London babe, da da da. Like, I love London, like, it's the best. It is the best, 
I would still stand on that. However, I think you need to experience another city. Yeah, you need it's to. Still necessary. And it's necessary. It's the best opportunity to do that. When, because when else would you do it? Like, exactly. if London, if especially if you live in London, like because London's already like the city that most people would probably yeah. aspire to eventually move to. If you're already in that city, you probably wouldn't leave unless like you yeah. want to change of scenery or something. But like London's already the like yeah. the end goal. So yeah, then yeah. you would never really move from London to like Birmingham. Why but would you do exactly. that? Exactly. So, so then uni is the only place yeah. you would do that. You want to go back home to London anyway. Yeah. Yeah, like so just, just experience it, yeah. yeah. and also it's not as like different as you think. Like, especially if you're gonna move from one big city to another. Like, if you move from London to Birms, I promise you, the whole Birmingham's already London anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. So Everyone in Birmingham is here. literally from London. Literally from London. So it's literally the same thing. East London. You would only hear a Birmingham well. accent when you go down Sainsbury's. Yeah. And you hear, Oh, so what? What do you want there, love? Or oh, that's the only time you're going to Other than that, everyone's all like, lecturers. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Especially this accommodation as well, Battery Park, so London, London Central, Central. London Central, especially East London, East London East South. London South. The whole batch part. Someone literally said, yeah. Oh, I have no idea where maybe I should bring my car, where did you leave your car, etc. Let me tell you something, yeah. See, when I used to watch videos about uni, a lot of people say, like, don't bring a car, it's not worth it, da da da. Mm. But don't listen to any of them. Listen to me here, yeah. I'm about to tell you the real truth. But bring your flipping car. If you have a car, bring your car to uni because I have no regrets. Even though I live in a city where literally, especially Battery Park, there's shops everywhere, the, the car was always still useful. Yeah. For one, Asda is only driving distance. So people that don't have a car, gonna go to Asda. Whereas yeah. me from the beginning, I was doing my shop to, to Asda. I'll drive nine minutes to Asda. The gym, I drive to the gym. No, 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 because guys, <laughs> the gym is a two minute walk. See, okay, but when it's cold love, no, no, and no, no, it's no, no, night time no, no, outside, no, no. you're gonna wanna drive. So she's gonna no, recommend no. driving, but she drives to walkable distance. Like we said, Sainsbury's is literally right next to our home, and if she could drive there, she would. Okay, but I don't. McDonald's is a two minute walk, she's gonna drive there. No, I she's won't. Gonna, you know what? As her number one passy princess, I love it. That's me. These lot, yeah, they'll so complain that I drive everywhere. Car, but as soon as I say it, drive, they'll wanna come in. But yeah, 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 yeah. driving, it, it becomes useful. Even yeah. actually, tell a lie. Maybe if you're going to Aston or BC, maybe you won't need to no. drive. No. Because like Cause they're, they're, in the, they're, they're, they're literally in the city centre. So where would you park? And yeah, that's the thing. It's the parking. With these places, with Battery Park, there's free parking here because it's like different side roads of like where you can just park free. Like all the side roads are all free. So like mm. it was easy. It was very convenient. I could bring my car, park yeah, for free. There are houses but, here. That you can yeah, the houses. Like, you know, like residential streets. There, there wasn't yeah. any like park permit. Yeah. So if you find parking, literally drive. Yeah. Literally drive. So when, do we wanna go to, when we want to go to Motives, I'll drive. That's paper cab. When we want to go out, we drive. We love it. When you want to go to City Centre, drive. Like, just, yeah. I promise you, bring the car. Bring yeah. the flipping car. And you can always drive back home as well. Yeah. When there was a time I wanted to go home spontaneously for my brother's birthday and there was actually no trains, I drove. Yeah. If you had no car, you wouldn't see that. She so. drove me home too. So. Yeah. Black people ratio. I promise you, everyone's black. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. But okay. let's let's now let's get into mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Not everyone's black. But if you go no. to the right places, everyone's black. So yeah. certain accommodations, yeah. everyone's black. And compared to most cities, where there's university, we have the high. Well, one of the highest ratios. A lot of the London people. Yeah. That's the thing. Here. It comes hand in hand with the London. London yeah. black Londoners. Is in Birmingham, in here. Yeah. In terms of accommodations, again, Selly Oak, I feel like is more black people. Mm -hmm. But what are motives like? I think the social life is really good here. A lot of people yeah. come from other cities to Birmingham for parties. A lot of the motives here are good, but don't do too many back to back because you actually clock very quickly that they're all the that same. The set is literally the same. It's the same order, it's the same songs, and it's mm. probably the same ad libs from the DJ. <laughs> Someone said, did you find a boyfriend or was that not in mind for first year? Mm. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about romance. Let's talk about romance. Honestly, when people said before, like, you won't find your husband in first year, I honestly thought that, like, they're just... If you believe that you're going to be an anomaly, don't. Don't. No one's the anomaly. It's literally fact. <laughs> I don't think any any couple has arisen from the first year, but there will be a lot of dibble dabbles happening. A lot of situationships and a yeah. lot of a lot of this, this person went to this person's a calm and this these people did yeah. stuff and this did that. A lot of that, but no actual hardcore relationships. Sorry to tell you. Sorry yeah. to break it to you. I mean, maybe you might. Actually, I'm not going to get home. Don't, don't give them home. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. No. Oh, someone said, mm. what's a rough estimate of how much money to bring to uni? Because I personally was told, I'll oh, save up this amount. Like 1.5, 2k. Bring it it really that. depends. First of all, if you already mm. have a job, and you have a stable income, there is no need to mm, save yeah. up the racks before uni because I promise you, all that's yeah. gonna do is make you broke during the summer. Yeah. Spend your money in the summer. And also, I can't lie, moving into this place already 
almost bankrupted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so you're expensive. paying for your decor, you're paying yeah. for your divan. The shopping you know, is so expensive. Da, 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 da. So that you don't really have time to be saving because you're literally spending money. Yeah, spending it. But I feel like yeah. just come and just just see how it goes. I don't think it's yeah. pressure to That's be saving up before. I went with the flow. I didn't bring anything to uni. No. And I've come to, I'm at the end of it and it's not my dad. Do you know what I heard? Someone was asking me, oh, you spend spend £100 a week on motives. Sorry, that's a big bag. It's not that Unless expensive. you're just someone that's outside and goes to every motive. Yeah. Time. It does. But again, it depends on your situation. Yeah, because like, if you don't have a stable... Like, your parents going to give you money every week. Yeah, week. literally. You need to, if you don't have a stable income, income, then maybe save up for yeah. Or like, if someone said, what's, what's your timetable like? Revision hours a week? How much free time do you have? Obviously, it's subjective. Also, it's not mandatory to attend your lectures. Obviously, you should. You should. But like, you can do it online. Like, everything's yeah. online now. It depends you on your online. course, though. Because some yeah. courses, especially healthcare courses, they want you to have a certain percentage. Oh, yeah. Attend, and some just don't care. I feel like it's any exam season where you don't actually have free time. Yeah, like, yeah. But other than that, like I was doing YouTube at the same time, I was editing, people yeah. had that, people would go out, people yeah. would do, like you have time, I can't lie. Like, but then again, you usually have time because you're not going to your lectures and you read the consequences when it's yeah. exam season. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you don't have it free time during exam yeah and that's why exam season is so like hardcore because more time yeah. people didn't go to their lectures yeah. but it's fine like we, we came out of it at the end like it's literally yeah. fine it's literally fine. It's fine. It's fine okay drinking culture do you have to drink to have fun that's a good question because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people think the uni is a lot of drinking and I think that's actually very true but it's funny it's not everyone drinks though like that's the thing like you can still have fun you don't have to drink but like obviously yeah. um, do you drink and orientate like obviously before a yeah. motive there'll be pre-drinks like everyone yeah. hosts a pre's at their flats yeah. it is a lot of drinking involved but I think if you don't drink nothing it will be literally yeah, fine yeah. like no one's gonna force you force alcohol yeah. down your throat like, as long as you have fun it should be fine i think it's perceived that way because it's like remember we went to mason and mm -hmm. literally every single window of everyone's kitchen you should have bottles and lines up. up i mean that's literally and even like yours bottles, as yeah. well and it's like everyone they just love to show that they drink oh it's like smart with culture i promise you mm. everyone and their mom does smart with at uni but me yeah. have i ever touched it no, like, do you know what I mean? And I think drinking culture and smart with culture are literally equal. I think the amount of drinkers is the same as my yeah. smart with. So if I've been able yeah. to not do smart with and I literally be in a room full of people and everyone's doing smart with and I don't feel any type of way to do it, yeah. it's also strong minded in yourself. It's mm. fine. Like, no one's gonna look at you sideways if you don't do it. You know That's what I mean? Ah! How was the iPad you bought? Would you recommend it? We are yes. iPad advocates. Apple sponsor us. iPads, I would 100% recommend it. 110%. 110%. Not even just for uni, like, it's just my best friend. Like, I'm not lying. I've had mine for two years. I literally use it all the time for all everything. Time. Even like, aside from academics, literally just as a phone. Literally. But then it's also really, really good for academic. Yeah, academic academics good. on there. Literally, I have Watch no lectures on there. Let me there. even show them. <laughs> I bought stationery thinking, so yeah, much. I'm gonna do, look at this full pack of pen, full pack of highlighters. So, full pack of highlighters that I literally yeah. not even open because have I even yeah. used pen and paper this whole time? I literally don't use I don't even have even paper. Even when you have to sign a document, you can scan it and write it. Literally, like, like everything's on the iPad. Everything, the notes look so there. pretty. Everything's so on nice. one page. It's split screen. Screen, do your notes oh yeah watch the watch the lecture time. Oh, yeah and the thing is as well if you didn't do if you done it on paper you'd have abundance and abundance yeah, and of paper your, your waist would literally just be full of folded and it's so portable it's so, so lightweight portable. take it to your cheeky lecture so great. get the flipping ipad if you're yeah. wondering if it's a good ipad get it how do you make the right choices of friends okay let's talk about friendships i feel like what they say mm. is true about how like the people you meet in like semester yeah. one and that and freshers are not going to be your friends later on they probably won't i mean you might still be cordial but they won't yeah. be your actual friendship group i feel yeah. like you kind of like one double with your friendship groups and you realize like yeah and then you you use for semester one to like realize okay who are my people i feel like don't get too close to people too fast in the yeah. start like don't be too buddy buddy and start telling people yeah. your business it's like you're doing all of that and you don't actually know if they've known you before and they want to use your business for something else mm. you don't know if it's like we're gonna stop talking to you next week and they're gonna start spreading your business everywhere like literally. you literally don't you literally don't know these people they're coming yeah. from different cities all over the country you literally don't know them yeah but another thing which is also like really confusing is that for mm -hmm. second but you're for your second year house where you start yeah. looking for houses it's around that October, start? November. yeah so that is it's actually like, during semester one but the thing is there's no solution to that because actually no you're going to end up moving in with the people that you met in semester yeah. one and then it might not work out well which is why it's a known thing that more time when people move semester in second year house yeah. th so there's good. arguments yeah, and stuff because yeah. you didn't actually know the people when you exactly. signed the contract but unless you look for housing after which is which is a bad idea because all the good houses will go yeah which is i just hate that whole concept yeah because now you're forced 
you're rushing people to find a house yeah. and they're gonna be pick, living with anyone. So you just need to have like good judgment when it comes to people. Yeah. Right? Because I feel like if you do live with like people you're not that close to, it won't be that bad. Like first year, we literally all got put into um, flats with people we don't know. Mm. Like, we made the best of it. Yeah, so it's just like when you're looking for your friends, don't be picking people that can turn out to be mean girls. Or if you, or if you feel like, 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 oh, I might have problems with this person yeah. down the line. Don't pick problems Listen with Listen to that straight away. Yeah, just pick people that are just calm. Even if you're not that close to them. Yeah, people because that like you wouldn't butt heads with. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're not best of friends, at least you're not enemies. Yeah. Kind of thing. Out of the three Burnham unis, which would you say the best is the best and what's the difference? Yeah, Okay, so okay. Yeah. UOB, yeah, but three main ones is University of Birmingham, Aston and Birmingham City University. Is that yeah, what it stands for? BCU. Yeah. UOB is the Russell Group one, that's why it's seen as more yeah. like the prestigious, prestigious one. one. Yeah. Um and then Aston and BCU and the Seek Centre. Aston is more serious. It's like, like it's in more, the middle of you. Yeah, like it's more BCU. in the middle, but BCU I see that more as like unserious and like yeah. gang members and stuff like that. Yeah. That's my impression of them. Yeah, I don't mean just, yeah. yeah. I mean that's what what it seems yeah. like. I don't actually know for sure for sure. Yes. Requirements to get in aren't that high. Yeah, that's another thing. That's what distinguishes the universities, the grade requirements. It's to get into yeah, the grade requirements would be higher than to get into Aston or BCU. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I think for academics, obviously UOB would be better. Do you have any regrets about the university you went to or the degree you chose? To me, I can't lie, I was actually stuck between Warwick and UOB for mm -hmm. ages. Like, I literally decided the day before the deadline. It was the most stressful thing ever. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, I didn't know how I cut it that close. It was literally the night before. After experiencing UOB, yeah. I made the right decision. But I do have regrets about how we'd done first year though. Oh yeah, we should have lived it up and lived it hard up, the whole literally. year. Especially because we're in UOB. I feel like a lot of people that come to UOB are people that yeah. have been really like hardcore study people Seriously, from sixth form. Yeah. So when we came to uni, we were all You're proper like, to... we don't want to fail, da -da -da, I want to study. But then I feel like it's we should have been a bit more deep. chill. Yeah, yeah, it's not that deep. And I feel like at the beginning, you think, oh, I have so much time. I'm telling you, time flies so so quickly in here. I don't know how first so year be ended already. In, be oh my having days. your fun activities, mm -hmm. be doing this and that, be do the first year because first year nothing compares. Yeah, do the it's first the year experience first year. from the very beginning. Yeah. Tell them about your degree thing. Yeah, obviously I'm moving university and I'm moving my I'm changing courses. So obviously I'm not that happy with the course I'm doing now. Yeah, but um, yeah, I just feel like for the amount of work I'm putting in and for the amount of workload like there is for a course that I don't really like, it wasn't worth my time. When I could get into medicine, I was just like, why not do that? Yeah. Especially when it's something that I actually wanted to do. Really and in the first semester, or first few weeks, you can actually change your degree. You can actually do whatever you want. Like, if you want to change halfway through the year like I did, then you can do that. With my course, it's like, I don't really like it like that. Like, so, it's a bit different to A-level. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's a thing where there's no other thing that I've... There's no other yeah. alternative. So if I was to change my course, there's nothing that I would yeah. prefer to do. So that's why I'm kind of just doing it. Mm. Kind of. People that regret their courses, they normally just change. Or yeah. they'll just do the year again. Yeah. There's a lot of older people that have done first yeah. year again. There's a, they, yeah. You have a lot of 20 year olds. A lot of gap students. Yeah. A lot of repeat students. Yeah, like not everyone just, is the same age. Yeah, not everyone's going to be fresh 18 when you start mm. uni. And last question. Would you have chosen UOB after experiencing first year? Yeah. If it wasn't because of my situation, definitely. Obviously, I have to go, but yeah. I love the uni so much. Yeah, she literally only changed the uni because she has to change course. You're, yeah. not go, you're not leaving because you don't like the uni. No, no, I love the uni. Yeah, so, yeah. If someone asked me, would you recommend it? I would literally say, yeah. 100%. Overall, it's a good year. I'm actually quite sad. I'll calm down. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, yeah. the accommodation video is coming because I know that's something that's also very important that people care about and something yeah. that I was really concerned about before I came UOB. So don't worry, yeah. I've got you guys. That yeah. video is coming up once I edit it. So any further questions, comment down below if I've missed anything that's important you just want to know. But yeah, I hope this video is useful for you guys. Yeah. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.